the Beverly Hillbilly. This fella said I could try on his frogman's outfit. Oh, is Mark here? Oh, not yet, but he's coming. Well, don't let Granny see you wearing this stuff. Hey, how come Granny's so dead set against Stelly's fella being a frogman? Granny's scared of the water. I remember back home, when the cricket rise, you couldn't get it across it for love and money. I recollect Ma saying that Granny wouldn't set foot outside the cabin in a heavy rain. That's a fact. I remember one time the crick rose, cut Granny off from her still for a whole month. What'd she do? Nothing she could do. Considering the fact we was having a flood, that was the longest dry spell Granny ever had. <laughs> Has she always been like that? As long as I can remember. I wish I had a nickel for every time I heard that woman say, If the good Lord had meant us to swim in the water, he'd have give us fins and gill. <laughs> and I hope you explain that to Mark Templeton. But Granny, Mark can't stay out of the water. It's his job. He's a Navy frog man. Then get him to quit. But we both likes the water. Darling, it ain't natural for humans. It's fun, Granny. Even Jethro wants to be a frog man. Oh, no. If Jethro turns into a frog man, his ma will kill me. Well, Jethro's done said that's what he wants to do. Well, him I can handle. I'll just cut off his vittles. Speaking of vittles, Mark says there's more food in the ocean than any other place. Oh, so that's why Jethro wants to be a frogman. <laughs> Mark says there's enough food in the ocean to feed the whole world for hundreds of years. Not after Jethro's been there for a couple of days. Billy <laughs> May? In the kitchen, Pa. Mark's here. Morning, Ellie. Granny. Howdy, Mark. Good morning, young fella. Now, Elliot, would you and your pa mind running on for a minute? I got a few things I want to say to Mark. Oh, yes, I'm Granny. Now, Mark, something you want, Jed? Yeah, I want to hear what you're going to say to Mark. Oh, well, I was just going to tell him how much he resembled John Wayne. He's a cowboy actor, you know. Yes, I know. You ever think of being a cowboy? No, I never have. Oh, you'd sit tall in the saddle, just like John. Up there where it's nice and dry. I'm afraid I'm not much of a horseman. Well, it's better than being a frog man. I was afraid that was coming. Now, Granny, you're just going to have to get used to the notion that Mark likes it, Elias took with it, and Jethro is in a seaman pond right now learning how to be a frog man. He's in the water already? Yes. Oh, I got to save him. He's Pearl's baby. <laughs> Who's Pearl? Jethro's mom. And the only woman I know who is as scared of water as Granny. Hello, Froggy. You can have the cement pot all to yourself. This rubber suit is hot. Once you get out of the water. Hey, there's some bugs down at the deep end. Too late for Pearl's sake. Amen. Jethro, are you in there, honey boy? Speak to me. Oh, no. I didn't make it. I'm sorry, Pearl. I've done my best. But you'll be happy to know that he's alive and well and eating as usual. Come on over here, Jethro. Come on, boy. I'll try and get a pretty girl to kiss you. And if that don't work, I'll have to take you to that psychiatrist. Come on, boy. Come on over here. Stop eating them bugs and listen to me. <laughs> Doctor? Not at all. That's what I'm here for. 
None of the girls in the secretarial pool would help me. So now you're my only hope. Well, I'm glad to know you have faith in me. Oh, I do. You work wonders with Mark and Ellie. Oh, yes, they're the frogs you brought in yesterday. <laughs> Lovely couple. Thanks to you. Did they get married? Not yet. We can't keep them out of the water long enough to have a wedding. Still hoping for a formal wedding, are you? Oh, sure. Jethro here is going to be the best man. Oh, this is Jethro. Yeah. He's Ellie's cousin, Pearl's boy. Well, how nice. Well, now, what can I do to help you today? You can tell Jethro here to stay out of the water. He won't listen to me. Jethro, stay out of the water, please. For Granny's sake. <laughs> And for his mama's sake, Pearl is scared to death of water. His mother is scared of water? Won't go near it. Well, that's very unusual. She's aquatic. No, she's a Bodine. <laughs> I don't recollect aquatics. <laughs> anyway, Pearl married Fred Bodine, handsome rascal. He come up from branch and swept Pearl right off of her feet. Poor fella drowned, though. He drowned. When Jethro was still a baby, I think that's why Pearl is so scared of water. His paw drowning that way. Why, well, don't believe I've ever heard of one of them drowning. Hers, I know he's the only Bodine who ever did. He was out in a boat with Jim Owen, and it turned over. And he couldn't swim to shore? No. The water in Lake Taney Como is just icy cold. Old Jim died for him time after time. They finally pulled him out unconscious. Well, old Jim certainly tried his best. You know Jim, do you? Uh, not personally, no. <laughs> he just wrote a book. Oh, uh, about the tragedy. No, it's a book of jokes and funny stories. Well, he certainly got over it, didn't he? <laughs> well, time is the great healer, as us doctors know. You're a doctor? Oh, yeah. Are you an M.D.? That's right. Mountain doctor. I just wish I was good enough to cure Jethro. But you're the only one that can do that. So I'll leave him with you. Well, now, just exactly what am I supposed to do for Jethro? Turn him back the way he was like you'd done for Mark and Ellie. You work wonders with them. Ellie's beautiful and Mark's handsome as can be. Oh, and you want me to make uh, Jethro here handsome? No, I'll settle for having him the way he was. You rang, Chief? I've been ringing for 20 minutes. Where have you been? I took the girls in the secretarial pool out for a coffee break. They've been through quite an ordeal. What happened? Well, it seems Granny took that frog of hers in and insisted they kiss the loathsome creature. Well, did they? Well, of course not. They're fired. What? Miss Hathaway? That family has $95 million in this bank, and if they want something kissed, it gets kissed. But, Chief, a frog! Frog, hog, dog. I demand loyalty and intelligence. What is intelligent about... Is Granny here with that frog she wants kissed? No. Have you tried the secretarial pool? Yeah. They wouldn't kiss me, neither. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's office. Oh, yes, Dr. Klingner. She did. Yes, yeah, so well, I'll take care of it right away. Jethro, Dr. Klingner on the next floor has Granny's frog. Will you pick it up, please, and take it home? You mean I ain't gonna get kissed? Go see Dr. Klingner. I ain't gonna kiss him! <laughs> All right, Froggy. Hop around to the cement pond and have yourself another swim. You're commencing to look dried out. Hello, Jed. Hey, you look old bush. What's the matter? I am. That's a long walk from the bank. Even if you cut across, you gotta jump walls and climb fences. How come you didn't let Jethro drive you? Jed, that boy is in no shape to drive. Why not? Don't ask me. I might have to tell Pearl. And it's not the kind of thing you want to say twice. And now you got me plum curious. Couldn't you just... Hey, okay, Granny. You're back, honey boy. Oh, let me look at you. Turn around. Oh, you're all right. Jenny's all right. Tell him he's all right, Jed. You're all right, boy. Oh, you're beautiful. 
beautiful, darling. Tell him he's beautiful, Dad. You're all right, boy. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to see you, darling. Pearl, sweet baby boy. Oh, Jethro, I love you. Tell him you love him, Jed. You're all right, boy. <laughs> oh, my baby. Oh, I just, oh, I could hug you. Hug him, Jed. I'm sticking with your all right, boy. <laughs> hey, Granny, I'm awful hungry. Can I have some vittles? Come and sit down, darling. Granny will fix you some delicious vittles for that sweet little rosebud mouth. Look at your sweet little rosebud mouth, Jed. It's getting sickening. <laughs> See you later. Well, youngins, how you doing? Just fine, Paul. This scuba diving's fun. You ought to try. That's an idea, Miss Clabbit. I think my girl fits you. No, I believe I'll pass on that. Well, you're a good swimmer. Well, yeah, but I ain't up to that underwater stuff. I'll teach you. It's easy. Come on, Paul, try. No, darling, I'm a little over the hill for this kind of thing. A lot of people your age scuba dive. Sure not. I know a man got me 20 years older than you are. Dives there every day. Is that a fact? Come on, Paul, be a sport. Well, I guess it wouldn't do no harm to give it a try. That's the spirit. You'll like it. How would you like some salted down possum shanks instead of chicken? Fine with me. I just happen to have a jar of them over here in the cupboard. I was saving them. For a special occasion. And you're it, honey boy. Jethro, can Paul borrow your swimming trunk? Sure, Ellie. He's up in my room. Ellie May, what does your Paul want with swimming trunks? Mark's gonna learn him to be a frogman. <laughs> oh, no. Not him, too. Jethro, did Ellie come through here? Yes, sir. She's fetching my swim trunks for you. Well, I don't want her to say nothing to Granny about me being a frogman. But I'm going to give it a try. Oh, no, you ain't. <laughs> granny, get off. You ain't going to be no frogman. You're the last one I got left. Get through, get this wild cat off my back. OK, Uncle Jeff. Because I finished these medals. <laughs> get her off now. <laughs> Here's the swimming trunks, Paul. We'd best keep them out of sight, Ellie. Your Granny's having a conniption fit. You said I was your honey boy. You said I was beautiful. You said I had a rosebud mouth. If I could get a swing at you, you'd have a rosebud nose. Take her up to her room, Jethro. Ellie, don't let your Paul become a frogman. I'm begging you. But he wants to, yeah. Granny. Then get a gun and shoot me. I don't want to live with a family of frogs. Take her on up, Jethro. We'll give her one of them tranquilizers. Give me gas. Hang me. Polax me. Please, somebody in my cell. You go on down to the seaman pond, Ellie, quick as we get Granny quiet, I'll join you. Yes, sir, Pop. Granny, I'll put you on your bed so she can have a little nap. Don't bother. Just throw me in my cedar chest, nail the lid down, and bury me six feet deep. Okay. What are you doing, boy? Oh, Granny wants to be buried in her cedar chest. <laughs> hey, you nail down the lid, I'll go dig a hole. Take her out of there. But she always told me to obey Granny. Take her out there and put her on the bed. <laughs> Don't bother, Jethro. Just throw me out the window. What are you doing now? Well, Granny wants to get thrown out the window. Uh, would you please open it for me? <laughs> Bring her back here like I said. You tell me to do one thing, she tells me to do another. I don't know who to listen to. Listen to me. Put her on the bed. <laughs> Your Granny swallowed it. Is it poison? Of course not. Then I don't want it. I know where there's some poison. Boy, wait out in the hall. Well, you try to please everybody, and all you get is yelled at. You say this, I say that, I don't know who to listen to. Hey, take one of these tranquilizers, Granny. Well, if I do, will you promise to stay out of the water? No, I won't. Well, I'm warning you. Jethro will eat your legs. Maybe you better take two of these. Well, you run along, Jed. I'll be just fine. Yeah, that's good. Just rest. Yeah. That's what I'll do, Jed. I'll, I'll just rest. That's my granny. You're a dear, sweet man, Jed. I love you. I love you, too, granny. No use trying to win.
to a nail a check. You're a mean man, Jed. And you're gonna be a mean frog. <laughs> That was wonderful, Mr. Clampett. Did you say something? You were great, just great. Thank you. How'd you like it, Paul? It's fine, just like you said. Father's just like you and Jethro, natural. Now, uh, we can only convince Granny. Forget it. Oh, did you unlock Granny's door? Yes, sir, Paul. How is she? Well, she's just laying on her bed, muttering to herself about how she'd have to go see Dr. Klingner again. Where are you going, Granny? Down to the cement pond and get the latest frog. Oh, did you change your mind? You gonna cook his legs for me? Cannibal. Excuse me, young as I'll get you out of this outfit. <laughs> Who's Dr. Klinger? He's a psychiatrist, Granny said. Good. Maybe he can cure aquaphobia. Her what? Fear of water. Oh, I sure do hope so. Granny's pet frog. Is that the one she named Mark? I don't know. I can't tell them apart. <laughs> she seems to be able to. Hi, Granny. Howdy. Would you like a ride down to Dr. Klingner's office? I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Where's your paw? He's changing. <laughs> He's changed. <laughs> Come on over here, Jed. That's a different one. I'm glad I'm not the only one she names frogs after. Come on, Jed. Swim over here and get in your cage. We got a ride down to Dr. Klingner's office. I hate to keep pestering you, Doctor, but you've done such a good job on Jethro. Yes, he does seem to look happy. Oh, this ain't Jethro. This is his uncle, Jed Clampett. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Clampett. Don't apologize to him. He brought it on himself. I begged him. I pleaded with him. He wouldn't listen. You'd think he'd know better at his age. Just how old is he? He's in his 50s. Really? I didn't know they lived that long. Oh, yeah. His grandpa lived to be over 100. Fantastic. Then, of course, many of the amphibious families do have a remarkable lifespan. Uh, for example, the uh, Terrapins. I don't believe I know that family. Is they friends of the Quatics? <laughs> yes, they're uh, related. Oh. Well, I hope the Terrapins ain't having the trouble with their kin folks that I'm having with mine. Especially him. I'm ashamed to admit that he's my son-in-law. This one is your son-in-law? Yeah. He's Ellie's Paul. Oh, Pearl's cousin, the uh, one Jethro calls Uncle Jed. That's right. And I'm granny, granny to, to all, all of them. Yes. <laughs> well, now, uh, what seems to be Jed's problem? His problem is that he's a frog. <laughs> yes, he definitely is a frog. <laughs> and it's so stupid. He's got everything. What do you mean? He's worth $95 million. He is? <laughs> Owns a mansion in Beverly Hills. But is he content to stay in it? No, not him. He's got to jump in the cement pond like the rest of his family. Well, they're just naturally drawn to water. That's the truth. And I'm getting sick of it. Well, I'll leave him with you, and I hope you can do for him what you've done for Jethro. I'm sure I can. Bless you, doctor. I ain't going to ask you how you do it. You got your professional secrets, and I got mine. Right, doctor. My specialties is poultice and risins and ease and rheumatism. Excellent fields. If you ever gets to aching in the joints, I got some rheumatism medicine that's out of this world. Will it actually cure rheumatism? No, but it'll make you happy you got it. Greetings, <laughs> Mr. Clover. Howdy, Miss Jane. Come on in. Thank you, Mr. Clover. I'm afraid I haven't time. Dr. Klingner asked me to return Granny's frog. She left it in his office again. Funny how that woman has took a fondness to these little critters. <laughs> Apparently. Well, au revoir. Oh, thank you.
Read your cage back, Granny. Glory, hallelujah, Dr. Klingner done it again. That's right. <gasps> Do you have a craving to eat bugs, Jed? Of course not. Good. Take off your shoes and I'll check your feet. <laughs> no more of this for you, Granny. You've had plenty. <laughs> The award-winning series, Where Family Matters. Where did you get the nerve to do that? From you. Judging Amy, Monday at 3 and 9 on Hallmark Channel. Everything we found indicates that he's the one. Can you help me? For top defense attorney Mike McBride, there's more to this case than meets the eye. See John LaRoquette in the Hallmark Channel mystery movie, McBride, The Chameleon Murder, Friday night at 9, only on the Hallmark Channel. Come back now, here. This has been a film waste presentation.